Bible reveals to us that thy will be done in heaven, on earth as it is done where? So, the earth is a place that has become rebellious because of the fall of man. We saw that God had an intention to have two homes. Hallelujah. Two dimensions and two realms where God will be at home. So in order for God to be at home, since there is a throne in heaven, God will have to have a throne. <laughs> Are you still following me? We did a lot of searching of scripture to arrive at that point in the Bible study. We saw the way the earth was created. We saw the way the heaven was created. We saw that the earth was created the same way the heaven was created. God created the heavens, formed the heavens. He breathed upon the heavens. He created the earth, formed the earth. He breathed upon the earth. He created man. He formed man. He breathed upon man. So that man will be able to operate in the two realms. Heaven, earth. And that's why when Jesus came, Jesus said, that nobody has ever been to heaven except the Son of Man that is in heaven. And the time that he was making that statement was on earth, but he had a vital link with heaven because that's how God ordained man to be. To be able to reach into heaven and bring heaven. Now in order for God to be able to operate as much as he operates in heaven on earth, there is, there, there is a vital need for all the tools that makes him at home in heaven to come into the earth. And the first thing that God needed to be established in the earth was a throne. Somebody say throne. And for several generations we established in that Bible study that God was trying to bring his throne into the earth to no avail until he found the personality called David. David satisfied all the requirements that God wanted in a king. Are you with me? Now, can we open our Bibles quickly? I won't waste your time. Just Psalms 89. Hallelujah. Psalms 89. Hallelujah. Are you there in Psalms 89? Uh, in verse 20 the Bible says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil I have anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established, and my arm also shall strengthen him. The en enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also on the sea and his right hand over the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Now if by the time you read Verse 27, you will know that uh, there is a shift there. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. You now discover that actually the psalmist had a revelation. Now, let me, let me bring you into what I'm trying to explain here. God was looking for someone in the earth. That will satisfy all the demands that will make him bring his throne upon the earth. If you read that psalm, you will think he's talking about David. That King David was the king he was looking for. Hallelujah. I say, I say hallelujah. Amen. God was able to cut a covenant with David, and the covenant that God cut with David had to do with the birthing of his throne in the earth. But it was because of the covenant that David and God had in common that God was able to raise a king in the earth that would bring his throne 
upon the face of the earth. When we talk covenant, hallelujah. I said, when we talk covenant, um, 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 Jesus is a son of Abraham on the account of the covenant. The agreement that God made with man to bring the influence of God's perspective into the earth realm. And so Abraham had to walk by faith in order to satisfy the demands of bringing God's covenant into the earth realm. As a result of that, Abraham, to Abraham was the entire earth willed. And any family that is upon the face of the earth that is going to be blessed is going to be because of Abraham. But you see, God also had a covenant with David. And the covenant that God had with David was because of the throne. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? In verse 27 of Psalms 89 where we read, you will see that God said, I will also make him my firstborn. And that statement revealed that it was not David who was making reference to, but he was making reference to Christ. That through the loins of David, by reason of the covenant that was reached by God and David, God was able to eventually bring forth a king. Notice that the Bible said that he will stretch forth his hand upon the river. It's talking about sovereignty power. That his influence will be from territory to territory. Boundaries and, and, and regions will not be able to resist the dimension of authority that he's going to wield because it will be from heaven above establishing the will of God in heaven upon the earth. Now in the manifestation of this promise of God, of this covenant of God that he had with David, Jesus was made manifest. And if you have read your Bible in the book of John chapter 12 verse 31, somebody open it. John 12 31. Jesus was speaking in parables. And only him that knows what is happening there will understand. John 12, 31. Anybody there with me? Please help us. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Read on. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, now what is the, the, the event that is going to ensure that the prince of this world will be cast out? Because when we talk, when we talk kingdom, we are talking tariff, we are talking what? Territory. Because a king without a territory is a prince. He has authority, but he has no jurisdiction to execute it. Now, so, 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 so. The Bible says now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of this world cast out. What is it that is going to cast out the current king upon the earth? He said, if I be lifted up. Now, if you notice, for those of you that were here in the Bible study, when we're talking about the resurrection of, the crucifixion of Jesus, we said that some inscriptions were written upon the cross. One was in Latin, one was in Greek, and one was in Hebrew. And what was the meaning of that which was written? This is what? The king of the Jews. What everybody in Rome that day, every Roman citizen saw, every Israeli citizen saw, when Jesus was crucified, he saw, they all saw a criminal. But unknown to them, the wisdom by which God was going to bring a throne upon the face of the earth was tied to a price that the Son of Man had to pay. And that price was the price of crucifixion. And that was what Jesus was saying. That if I, if by any means, I don't know, I, I don't want to be crucified. But if by any means I'm lifted up in that same act, judgment has come upon the prince of this world. And God will have a throne in the earth realm where he will rule from. But nobody knew what was happening. Everybody saw crucifixion. They saw a criminal being put to death. They saw somebody being hanged up there. But it was a price that had to be paid for the throne to come into the earth. He said, now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of this world cast out. And I, if I, by any means, am lifted. My will will prevail among men. Hallelujah. And you know, when we began to speak about... I asked the class that day when we were doing the study, I said, when he cried that cry, my God, my God, why, why hast thou forsaken me? I asked the class, did God respond? They said no. I said no. God responded. Then I took them to the book of Psalms 
22. Because in Psalms 22, there's Bible scholars, I mean Bible scholars of, of repute, have isolated Psalm 22 and say it has its own life and it is in its own class. Because Psalm 22 is fragmented into two parts. And they could not relate the first part to the second part. And as such, it's isolated from the stream of the Psalms as a Psalm that has its own life. And when we looked at Psalm 22, you see that Psalm 22 was a prophetic Psalm that gave us insight into the things that happened upon the cross. It was Psalm 22 that revealed to us the effect of Jesus' cry on the cross. It was Psalm 22 that also revealed to us the response of God based on that cry. All these things were interactions that were done between heaven and earth in order that the throne of God which John saw in heaven can become operational in the earth. Are you still with me? If you are still here, say Amen. amen. Are you there in Psalm 22? Maybe we'll just read a verse in Psalm 22. The first aspect of Psalm 22 reveals the sufferings of Christ. And you see that the things that are articulated there are word for word in many cases with the actual event. The second aspect of Psalm 22 reveals the resultant effect of the cross. At that time we see that the throne had been brought into the earth. And the extent of his dominion will reach from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. That means that everywhere from that day where man was found, this throne had the ability to draw men of all tribes, all nations unto him. That is possible because there is a throne that wields a power. It's gaining territory and gaining influence in the midst of the earth. It is to that throne that we call you to bow. Because the devil will be going on rampage from city to city, from place to place, from family to family, seeking advantage. But the place where that throne has an expression, there will be an exception. If you are still with me, say amen. Yeah. You see, the gospel that we preach, is, it must be a gospel of power because the, 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 there is power in the gospel. Every time two kingdoms clash, there is always a need to exercise some form of power. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's why we are endued with power. Because the kingdom of God is not in meat and in drink. It's not in lingo and in linguistics. It is in power. For Jesus said that if I by the finger of God cast out devils, it is a pointer to the fact that the kingdom of God has come among men. If there's a contrary influence, that, that sizes up the power of the enemy and puts it aside. It is because another kingdom have made it successfully into the earth. If you are still with me, say amen. Yeah. Can we check Psalm 22 before we continue? Somebody's lamenting here. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Did Jesus say that? Same thing. But where I want to take you to, I don't want to trouble you with too many scriptures because there are so many online. You see, we don't need to be in doubt as to the, the principles and pattern of the kingdom of the heavens because it's contrary to the kingdom and oppressions of man. Yeah. And so we need to take time to meticulously reveal it so that you will see it clearly. People that are controlled by that throne because the effect of that throne has come into the earth by reason of the sacrifice of Christ. People that are controlled by that throne, there is a description. There is a way you can identify them. Even though they walk in this world, they are not of this world. And that's why the devil cannot exact upon them. Because they bear the authority of a different king. They dance to the beat of a different drummer. They pledge their allegiance to a different flag. And when they say, Jesus, something moves in the realms. It must be power that will reveal your identity. There must be a form of force. Form of power that accompanies your life that reveals that you are an ambassador from a kingdom that is not of this world. But you see, it's our allegiance and compliance to the principle of that kingdom that brings the authority of God and rubber stamps it upon your life so that everywhere you show up, God's kingdom has shown up. If by any means God wants to stretch his hand, he will come out through you. Are you still with me here? 
And so when the throne was smuggled into the earth realm, the place of that throne is the heart of men. So it's the heart of men that bear the throne and make it functional in the earth. Our level of compliance for God determines how much of that throne can come out. And that's why the issues concern the kingdom of, of the heavens are things that we need to raise up for the people of the land to see. Because the failure of the church of the 21st century is tied to the fact that there is no king in our lives. We have found a savior, but not a king. And that's why our lives are out of tune and harmony with the will of him that sits in heaven. If only God, you can hear the call, the clarion call of the law. You know, people do not believe now that in something that people have maintained chaste character, they don't believe that it's Christianity anymore. They believe it's just coming when you receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Somehow it begins to move upon your inside. He connects you with the wealth of heaven. You can access and navigate and take advantage of the bountiful deposits of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody say Amen. After you have done that, you will realize that that is your heavenly status. And God has an assignment for you on earth. And on earth you are here as an ambassador. And one of the things that is embodying upon your assignment upon the earth is that you represent your kingdom adequately and sufficiently. Then the issue of obedience to God comes into play. The issue of your character of holiness comes into view. If we were only heavenly beings and had no earthly expression, we will not talk about holiness. We are with God already in the, in the highest of heaven. But if you must walk this world, the kingdom you represent has a value system that is supposed to be expressed through your life. If that aspect of Christianity is not part of your theology, what you are practicing is an aberration. It doesn't satisfy the will of God. Now we need to call black, black, call white, white, call the devil, devil, so that people can be delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry, I'm not too refined. Amen. I'm not too refined. I... Some time ago, I was in the backside of the desert calling upon Jehovah and he appeared to me. Uh, he didn't teach me refinement. Hallelujah. How to speak nice. Amen. Uh, you see, when the spirit of Elijah is walking on your inside, mm, the Lord give you understanding. Please accept my shortcomings. Mm. But we need to, we were commissioned to preach the kingdom. And it happens to be that it is not a land that can be easily sold. Amen. Amen. In the book of Psalm 22, we see the effect of his sacrifice upon the cross. Now let's read from verse 22. I will declare thy name unto, all, unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. Ye that ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hid his face from him when he cried unto him he heard. It means God answered. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Verse 27 is the full effect of that sacrifice. He said all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. Did Jesus say that if I be lifted up I will draw there is a compelling force that has entered the earth realm on the account of the sacrifice of Christ. The influence of that throne extends to the, to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. He can appear to a man and say, I am Jesus. So the effect reaches to the ends of the earth. Now what we are trying to talk about when we talk about the kingdom of the heavens is how that your life can be programmed from above. Your reality is in heaven. Have you ever met somebody from the water spirit? Water cult? The person is walking BSU, but the person's reality is in the... The person is to stay in close acquaintance with his 
operative base which is in the depth of the water. You don't know that person except you know the person's reality. And if you have a ministry that does not challenge the person's reality, your ministry will not be able to bring deliverance to such ones. You must have an utterance that can reach into the depth of the water and to isolate that one from the power that makes that person operate here on earth. When we talk earth, when we talk earth, when we talk influence, when we talk territory, you are going to meet with demons, with devils. You meet with people that command forces from the water, from the grave, from the mountain. But if the throne of God has a place in your life, God will stamp and approve of your authority and through your life, the power of God will be made known to your generation. So when you see a man that is moving in the anointing and is walking in sin, run away quickly. Because the person does not have a king. Uh, the anointing is something that can be corrupted if you don't know. The Lucifer himself is, was called what? The anointed cherub. So he had some stuff running on his life. And it happens to be that the gifts and the callings of God, I don't know why he did it that way. Yeah, with that. And so somebody that is not vitally connected to heaven can still have some gift because there was a time the person connected and God was able to release that. The person paid the price sufficient to get that one operational in his life. And then when that happens, the person now disconnects and says, Hey! I don't come. Most people, most preachers do that. And they run on a journey of their own devices. They do not understand that God will never give you anything that you don't need Him to operate. If you are disconnected vitally from the throne, your life... Every day of your life leads you more to the value of the shadow of death. You encroach into danger and your soul can be destroyed in the process. Number three, that a man has a supernatural operating in his ministry does not mean that his doctrine is right. Many people that are leading many people astray in Nigeria have some power to show. May God open your eyes to see the kingdom of heaven. May he open your eyes to see that kingdom. May that kingdom become operational in your life. That is when the spirit of discernment will operate in you. And then you understand that beyond... See, in the... Oh my God. I don't know how to say... I, 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 I want to teach. Lord, help me. So I introduced the topic yesterday. I talked about, I said, understanding the kingdom of heaven. That's the topic. Wrong with me. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. The first thing in the kingdom of heaven. I have a script here. A small script. Amen. The first thing in the kingdom of the heavens that you are going to be exposed to, number one is the need to repent. Now, I'm going to tell you what it means to repent. So, just be patient. The need to repent and embrace the kingdom. Matthew 3, 2. Matthew 4, 17. The need to repent. Somebody help me with Matthew 3, 2. Now, this is John the Baptist speaking. Notice that John the Baptist had a baptism of repentance. And saying what? Repent ye because what? The kingdom of heaven is. Now what is? The Bible said that when we become born again, we have the capacity by reason of the fact that God has activated our organs of perception to be able to perceive God. Did we say that yesterday? Now when you have now perceived God, the will of the mind of God concerning an issue is now left for you to repent and then accept the way of God. Alright? And I need you to understand that that is an ongoing and ever going experience. A time comes when God decides to open your eyes to see how that your relationship is wrong. Then he shows you. He said, be not conformed to this world. And then you now check your relationship and see that when somebody in the world has a relationship, the way they behave is the way you are behaving. It means that this relationship has become conformed. It doesn't satisfy kingdom perspective. 
Remnant Christian Network is an interdenominational ministry to the body of Christ. Today's sermon is available for free download on our website www.rocnsermons.org. That is rocnsermons.org. You can contact us by visiting that website and sending us a message or sending an email to contact at rocnsermons.org. You can also contact us on telephone by calling this number 0803-442-0524 or 0807-309-5885. You can partner with us in spreading God's word by calling this number 070-655-67437 or visiting our website. This radio ministry is supported by your generosity and is produced by Stream Globe Media Incorporated.